Hello everyone. Welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. So thankful to have you with me today as I think about those that are listening to these words and praying that God will bless you as you study the Word of God together with me. Let's go to the Lord and pray uh, that he would do just that. Bless us. Heavenly Father, we do ask you to bless us in your Word. You said your word is a lamp unto our feet, it's a light into our path, and today as we dive in once again to this book of Ephesians, I pray that you will continually open our hearts and minds to receive from you, that our eyes and our ears will be open to know those things that you want for us to know and to live according to those things by your Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to be pleasing to you, and so bless us today in our study, I pray, in Jesus' name, amen. The title to today's lesson is, Let No Man Deceive You. It's taken from the book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. As Paul the Apostle wrote to the Ephesian church members, he listed fornication, all uncleanness, covetousness, filthiness, foolish, ta foolish talking, and jesting as behaviors that were not becoming of saints or pure and holy ones. He also stated how no whoremonger nor unclean person, covetous man who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. In chapter 5 and verse 6 of his letter, Paul warned the Ephesians to let no man deceive you with vain words. Where we read, let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. The verse begins, let no man deceive you with vain words. Paul began with the words, let no man deceive, which is the Greek phrase, apateo, medius apateo, and means to do not allow, permit, or license anyone to cheat, delude, or trick you which refers to the Ephesian church members, with vain, which means empty, devoid of truth, or places and vessels which contain nothing, words, or speeches, utterances, and anything someone has said which embodies a conception or idea. Paul warned the Ephesian church members concerning those who would attempt to trick or delude them with empty and devoid of truth concepts and ideas. The verse goes on to say, For because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Paul continued, For, which means even indeed no doubt, seeing then therefore and verily, because or through, by means of, by reason of, on account of, and for this reason of these things, which refers to the sins Paul mentioned in the previous verses, comes or appears, arises, shows, establishes, and finds a place of influence, the wrath, which means anger, temper, agitation of the soul, impulse, violent emotion, and indignation of God, who is the Godhead bodily and trinity, which is comprised of God the Father, Christ the Son, and the Holy Spirit, upon the children, which refers to the offspring of men, descendants, and posterity of disobedience, or obstinate opposition to the divine will, who exhibit rebellious unbelief. Paul shared the wrath of God as the consequence for those who follow after vain words of these deceivers. When we meditate upon these words of Paul, we should be warned concerning those who promote empty and vain ideas and concepts of worship. First, we should recognize a warning would not be necessary if there were not vain words of which we are to be concerned. Secondly, we must compare any ideas that come from men with the Holy Scriptures. If their concepts do not align with the Word of God, we must cast them aside because the consequence of following them would be the wrath of God, not only upon those who perpetrate them, but also upon those who follow them. May the Lord Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit, keep us aware of those who would lead us away from the truth of God. And may we be separated from the wrath that God will pour out upon those unbelievers. Next time, Paul tells the Ephesian church members not to be partakers with them. So read ahead and we shall join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. 
And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word in Jesus' name.